Today's episode is the mailbag. That means it is all about you and all about your questions. Don't miss a moment. Don't miss a mid-show injury from one of the hosts. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of this show and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Thursday episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman. That's the, me in the building. That's yeah, that's me. This goofy movie T-shirt on. Oh yeah, got to represent. The best Disney cartoon of all time. You have more than one goofy movie clothing item. I certainly do. Yeah. I have many. How old is the goofy movie? Uh we talking like twenty oh, 20 plus. Yeah. Years. Nineteen ninety five. Nineteen ninety five? So we're we're coming up on thirty. Coming up on thirty. Nice. So and and were you there on the day it was released? I did see it in the mm. theater, yes. Yeah, and you're still representing. Yeah. Getting those VHS sales up. Because it just holds up. It's it's an incredible movie for all ages. The, hashtag not a sponsor, but ladies gonna, and gentlemen. <laughs> not this, a sponsor. Yeah, the Goofy movie sponsoring people Well, these I'm days. just saying, like, Disney is not sponsoring me saying how good Hold the on. Goofy movie is. We just got a sponsor offer from Mighty Ducks 1. <laughs> Here it comes. Well, just settle down. Kyle's on the line. He can hear you. Oh. But, but Goofy movie, like, you watch it, and you're like, Max is... So cool. Oh, he does yeah. his dances, the power line, and you're like, "What well, Goofy is just, he needs to back off. Right. And yeah. then you become an adult, and you watch the movie, and you're like, Goofy is just trying to be a good father, and Max is a brat. <laughs> so you've gone through both <laughs> oh, roles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great movie for I everybody. have never watched it all the way through. Oh, man. So maybe this you, year. You have not seen the big finale, the big eye-to-eye. Uh, dancing on the stage no i mean I feel, I feel a little bit like i've lived through it here on the show you at are times. you are missing out maybe this year maybe i'll i'll uh, sit down with my boys <laughs> and um we'll watch it so there you go or rent out a theater yeah oh i'm in Com- expensive to the company <laughs> <laughs> uh welcome in one and all mike Wright, andy holloway here jason will be back next week some things at the top i wanted to talk about we've got uh we're going to discuss some of the stat surprises that came our way when we were going through all of the teams for the ultimate draft kit. Talk about some NFL news, some mailbag, and some other stuff on today's episode. But here at the top, I do want to uh, announce that we have a winner of our Dynasty Week giveaway. Yes, thank you. Jeff Midgley. Jeff Midgley has won a signed Devon A. Chan jersey. And uh, and from what I understand, they don't just sell those in extra small, like his actual jersey. Oh, so, true, true to size. Yeah. So, Jeff Midgley, congratulations. Just nine days until the Ultimate Draft Kit is released. Nine days, Mike. The anticipation is palpable. In the studio, you can feel the stress of our employees. Yep, it is rising. But we're good. We're we're on track. For those of you that are new to the Ultimate Draft Kit, it is our tool that the entire team builds and keeps updated throughout the entire offseason to prepare you for your fantasy football drafts. The UDK has uh, tier-based rankings, which is always a very popular feature. All of our stat projections for every player, 100-plus video player profiles, which we are in the throngs of recording. Uh, throng, the throng, throng, throng. Yeah, I don't know why I said in the throngs. <laughs> it sets, there are certain things you just need to be careful. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Custom cheat sheets in the UDK, Mike. Uh, sleepers, breakouts, busts, and values. Uh, we have a custom player marking so you can set aside players that you're targeting in your yeah, draft. It's, it's great. It's a great tool for using actively during the draft. It's what all of us use as well uh custom scoring support is in the udk as well for your league scoring so your rankings are specific to your league 
We have consistency charts. We have the risk and the upside meters. It's all available on the web and on the mobile app. And then we have a ton of like uh, ancillary charts and resources in yeah, there. Yeah, bunch of research items to help you. Because we're, like, we're, we're trying to help be a guide for you to simplify it as much as possible. But we're also trying to give you uh, a lot of research tools so you can make your own, uh, you know, your form your own opinions based off of, of dad and how you're looking at it. And I would stay also, stay tuned because I have been in the laboratory yeah. and I cannot wait until we get this thing out so we can work on some new tools. And if you have the UDK Plus, you get all the things I just mentioned, but you also get the draft analyzer tool, which, which lets you import your team after you draft and we'll grade it for you. We'll tell you your strengths and your weaknesses and ways to improve. Set the foundation as you head into the season. You get the Dynasty Pass, which is available right now, and you get the DFS Pass if you play DraftKings, uh, you know, best ball, um, FanDuel, whatever the case may be. Uh, heading into the season. And there you go. UltimateDraftKit.com. Nine days left to get the pre-order price. You can jump in. And here's our quick question of the day, Mike. We we were talking about our player projections for the season, which, you know, we stay water. We, we modify them. We update them. We change them. When a new signing or injury or perspective uh, happens, we update them. But as you go through and you went through your your stats of every player, what's something that surprised you when you were in that process in terms of maybe it's a team, maybe it's a player, yep. maybe it's a why is that guy ranked there? So the a, a, a very strong takeaway I have is for the Green Bay Packers, and my note is good luck. Okay. <laughs> because it, like the a, ADP wise, you know, currently with – the way that fantasy players are treating it, it is locked in that Jaden Reed is the player to have. He's the Green Bay Packer wide receiver. Last you feel year, like that's a that's a consensus opinion? I'm just saying ADP wise. Okay. I'm, I'm not talking you. about I my, our opinion is just ADP, uh, and I, I I understand it totally. Last year, a rookie who I, he didn't have like a a monster breakout, but for for his draft capital, what you were expecting from Jaden Reed. It was a great season. However, the injuries and things we like weeks five through thirteen. That's when we had essentially all of them. And I'm going to include. I'll say the four pack that includes Dontavian Wicks. That includes Romeo Dobbs and Dontavian Wicks, who, which Dontavian Wicks is kind of like slowly gaining uh, market buzz as one of people's favorite sleeper wide receivers. He's very very cheap in drafts right now, but. Uh, during those games, weeks five through thirteen, Watson, Christian Watson, remember that guy? <laughs> he was eighteen percent of the targets. Jaden Reed was fifteen, Dobbs was fifteen, and Wicks was down at ten percent. So it's it's why I'm saying good luck is we're you know players drafting right now are saying it is guaranteed Jaden Reed because Christian Watson is going multiple rounds after him, and yet in the games where they were actually healthy. Christian Watson was the one who was seeing the larger target share. He's the bigger play guy. So it's Here's it's, why. it's a it's a murky situation. Here's why I think it's so difficult. Is because each individual player has a wide range of outcomes. None of yes. them are settled in, right? There's not um because they're younger. Like you don't have a player that's been around for a long time. Remember when Randall Cobb was finishing his tenure in Green Bay? You knew what Randall Cobb was. Right, But I think you could literally say, I don't know exactly what Jaden Reed is. I don't know exactly what Christian Watson is. He's had big games. He's had disappearing acts. He's had injuries. Romeo Dobbs, is he just the guy that's capable to fill in when other players are hurt? And then Dontavian Wicks has a ceiling that I think people are getting their heads around now yeah, and saying, well, you know, is there a world where Dontavian Wicks is the second most valuable wide receiver? There is. a it, Every single – universe exists for the for the Green Bay Packers of some have higher probability but I'm saying the order of one through four every single possibility between those four guys exists to me the reason I have Jaden Reed ranked the highest is because watching football games I think he's the most versatile and talented player in that group 
and I think his floor is the highest in terms okay. of weekly utility. Or do you remember that they had Do a, you remember? <laughs> this is what we're doing all songs today. That uh, the, the Packers had two playoff games. I do remember that they played in the playoffs. Yeah. And the first playoff game, Green Bay versus Dallas, Jaden Reed, the floor was in fact zero as he had three targets, zero for zero. I don't zero, remember. Zero for zero. He wasn't on the field. Well, it, Jaden they, Reed's like the, the end game, of the year was injury plague. Remember he played yes. through, a, a, I think it was a foot injury for multiple weeks in a row. So that, yeah, again, like I said, there's questions for all these. Yeah, he missed week 16. There are question marks around all these players. So, yeah, I think the synopsis of good luck, um, I think it's fair. Like I'm, I'm not saying don't take shots. I think that you should 100% be getting some exposure to probably all of these guys, depending on how many drafts you do. But it's the the certainty of which the market is convinced it's Jaden Reed right now. That's where I'm like, hey, let's pump, pump the brakes maybe a little bit. Yeah, I get it. I, I think they are – they're the uh, highest upside question mark team. There's a bunch of wide receiver rooms that you're like, good luck, yeah. but you also don't need them. Like you're not Sh sure. You're not yeah, like yeah, yeah. like New England. Good luck. Yeah. You, right. Uh, yeah. We we both kind of are interested in Polk, but right. But it's not to the degree of yeah. his ADP is going to be like your last pick in the draft. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, Jaden Reed dealt with toe sprain, sprained ankle, and then missed a week. Kept trying to play through. I think it was a back situation. Uh, he was beat up. Christian Watson's been beat up. And, yeah. um, no, it'll be interesting for yeah, me. The the quote, well, I, I think LaFleur was just talking about Christian Watson's hamstrings and whether or not they're past the, like, are we are we truly past all the hamstring <laughs> injuries? No. And, and he's like, I don't know, we're, we'll find out. That's a tough one because those type of injuries keep cropping up. We, yeah. we joked about. I mean, Julio Jones played a lot of games, but he limped off the field a lot of times. For me, it was um, the most ironic and wild of statistical outputs. My number three tight end. Yeah, easy E. <laughs> just, just unbelievable. But Evan Ingram ended up my number three tight end in my in my rankings. I am apparently very in love with a player that had 143 targets, 114 completions, just 963 yards on those completions. Just four touchdowns. But, I mean, it was a great year last year for Evan it Ingram. Was. And you're coming into a season with a, a over 200 vacated targets, I believe. Um, you don't have Calvin Ridley. you got a rookie in Brian Thomas who you and I debated on the mock draft show, the Christian Kirk-Brian Thomas thing. Uh, and then, like, moments later, they talked about Christian Kirk being the clear alpha in, in OTAs and Brian Thomas has a ways to go. But, you know, Gabe Davis, not a target hog. Brian Thomas, brand new, no Zay Jones. And I could see Evan Ingram having the target lead again at the position this season. He is just, he's a, an underneath tight end that is like having a pass catching running back. He's a, an escape valve, has the best rapport outside of Kirk with Trevor Lawrence and vacated targets. They could definitely go his direction because, um, he is just, uh, He's an easy option right. for Trevor Lawrence in the offense. So I, just on sheer volume, I think that he's going to be back up near the top. He doesn't win you a lot of weeks, but that's not the number one goal of tight end a lot of the time. The number one goal of tight end is don't fall behind at the position. Don't lose the position week to week, and he doesn't let you lose it. Yeah, and there's, there, there is the – the room for him to have an a an outlier touchdown season with with that amount of receptions and that amount of involvement, it the most likely thing is it'll still be a low touchdown output for for Ingram. But the world exists where he hits eight or nine, and then then he's like a one of the best picks at the at the tight end position. And it's just it's now, I mean that's that's another year of Doug Peterson and. His tight ends, they're just peppered with targets. And then uh, Jason's not here, but someone from our team decided to throw <laughs> throw his sure. ranking of DK Metcalf into his, the quick question. His spicy. Which is number 10. He loves DK right he now. He really does. And um, I don't know if I'm there. I'm not. 
I did draft him in the mock draft. He was the bottom of the final tier of where I could be okay with him as as my wide receiver one. Because if you ended like I I went running back, running back, quarterback, and he ended up my wide receiver one because he's a fourth round. So maybe we make him explain himself next week. Maybe we do a little explain yourself segment. Maybe we do that. <laughs> I just I don't know I'm trying the, to agree with you. Maybe man. we do. Maybe. All right. Some. Uh, are we good to move on to news? I yep. think we're good. News and notes from around the league. <laughs> well, uh, it's almost like we we were insulated from the reality of injuries because we were, and now that they're all all the players are running around on the field, there's a bunch of injuries popping up, and it's early, Mike. So, do you concern yourself very much with? Uh, news of hamstring injuries like Josh Jacobs, uh, you know, talk of Kyron Williams with a foot injury and won't be part of the offseason program, but will be back in time for training camp. Does that does it like give you the first shiver of what reality is like in fantasy for the season? Uh, it's it's not giving me the shiver, and it's not altering how I think about any of these players. But it will be. I mean, it's it's a note so that. If Josh Jacobs at any time during training camp has the same leg with a with a hamstring injury, then I will become very concerned. So we had Kyron Williams dealing with a foot injury. He's had an injury history. Has been brought up on this show. They drafted Blake Corum. Uh, you're not concerned right now, and and no, not Sean McVay has been very accurate when he talks about. Uh, players and their injuries, and he says he's going to be back for camp, but it's in the back of your mind. Yeah. Keaton Mitchell on schedule. This would be Ravens. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. All right. He's on schedule? Oh, no, he's not ahead of schedule. So he is behind, he schedule. Is behind schedule. Is that what that means? It. He, How dare there's you? only one way to take it. If everyone is ahead of schedule and you're the only one on schedule. Imagine being on schedule. You're late. Shoot. That's not great. Well, that is kind of what the news report is. Recovering from a torn ACL will not be back for training camp. Not expected back until sometime during the season. And the quote said, it's not like right around the corner. <laughs> okay. So That's is it around great. the block? I don't know. Uh, he then, led all NFL running backs in yards after contact per oh, attempt. Last I mean, he team. was absolutely him. If if he had was able to finish the season like him and Achan, it would have just been both of those guys were electric on the field. Uh, not we don't know anything further yet, but our injury guy Matthew Betts he did mention in our Slack of he's kind of had his concerns about this injury that it might be a multi. Like this isn't just a clean regular ACL, so that's just just uh that's even more on the radar now. If this is where he is in his recovery, yeah. So Keaton Mitchell's not going to be a a factor for your drafting of Derrick Henry or consideration on the backfield. No, and then Kyle would bring up Rasheen Ali, the the rookie that they drafted, because Kyle is Kyle is drunk in love right now. Is with he, Mister Ali? Yes. He is. I who has him in Dynasty? I believe uh Kyle's team. Does he? Yeah. I'm just, oh wait, is it? Yeah, it probably is. Uh, maybe I don't know. We we would have to check. But the the point being, uh if you missed when we talked about Ali, he's his production profile is incredibly interesting. Uh and you know, they, they got it seemed like the Ravens were forced into using Justice Hill last year when they didn't seemingly like Based off of his entire history, they didn't want to do that. So as of right now, I I don't hate it. I think Ali is a, a very uh, intriguing player who could be like he could be the 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 most uh, the highest beneficiary should Henry miss some time. He had the uh, bicep injury, I think, in the Senior Bowl that knocked him down a little bit. Yes, he got he had he essentially like had a year almost deleted from injury, and then he got hurt right before the draft. Lad McConkey, there's a report out of from the Athletic that the majority of all of his snaps with the first team have come from the slot. That's kind of that's essentially what I was expecting. It's what makes sense on this roster right now. Josh yeah. Palmer, Quentin Johnston on the outside. McConkey played 29 percent of his college snaps in the slot. 
It is my it is the reason I have Keon Coleman higher than McConkey in my rankings for this year. I liked McConkey a ton. Talked about him a lot in the offseason. Liked the situation for Keon a little bit more. Yeah, I can agree with that. Scared of McConkey being a six for fifty six and no touchdown guy. Valuable for the team, maybe not as valuable for fantasy. Just speculation right now. Yeah, and, and just some numbers. Uh, guys, look, when you hear someone is designated to be a slot wide receiver, it does lower their probability to becoming a true fantasy like difference maker. It doesn't eliminate it because we, you know, the NFL is starting to shift. But so last year, uh, Keenan Allen, nearly forty eight percent of his targets were from a a route out of the slot. So a good amount. And same thing, like CD was at 57%. Amon Ra was at 55%. Ooh. So it's not it's not the end when you say that, well, he's going to be predominantly in the slot, but it does lower the odds. Yeah. Yeah, a lower percentage of touchdowns historically have come from the slot. Yeah, because you got a lower depth of target. And- yeah, so it's just something to pay attention to. And especially as a rookie, if that's where you're going to get the majority of your snaps, uh, you know, Manage expectations, low passing volume, offense, and you know you and I were talking about Josh Palmer maybe being just free, yeah. free in drafts, and yet maybe the number one target. Yeah, there. Shh. Yeah, Shh. don't well, tell anybody. Don't tell anyone. Also, because your your sanity will be called yeah. into question. Yeah, if you start talking about proclaiming, I think Joshua Palmer's the guy. Uh, yeah, I mean it, it, it's uh it's interesting. Rashi Rice. The charges from the nightclub assault have been dropped. The the alleged assault. Yes. Which well, I mean, yeah. That's 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 at least one positive step here for Rice. This that doesn't mean the like, league can still have like, their say. Yeah, the the league can still have a say from this thing, and that doesn't even take into account the whole uh, speeding on the freeway accident. We're going to take a quick break and come back with some of your questions. All right, we're going to take a few minutes and jump into your mailbag questions. A lot of things going on. We're going to do our best to help you out. Let's do it. Mailbag. Mailbag. Do you feel a pressure when Jason's not here? Like when it's just the two of us, do you feel like a pressure to do more with the mailbag? Uh, like you're more on an island over there. Like I, I don't think about it. No, no, it, you, it's just you're just in it. Yeah, it doesn't man. matter. Yeah, I, I mean, you're like, you might as well be alone in a room. I, I pretty much leave my body. Do you for a mailbag? Yeah, frightening. Dude, you hear those notes? No, I. Yeah, those things no, are they upstairs. Were, they're they're special. Uh, question from Troy Cummings writes in, uh, off of X. He says, hello, chosen ones. <laughs> Why are we hello. still so high? Uh, that's the first time we've been called the chosen ones. <laughs> Why are we still so high on Justin Jefferson? He has a rookie quarterback. Only five wide receivers have finished top 12 with a rookie quarterback, let alone top five. Help me understand. And he brings up, uh, well, we can look through history yeah. and see the five. Uh, I remember the Cam Newton year in 2011 where Steve Smith was the wide wide receiver seven. I think he had 1,300-something yards. Christian Ponder uh, managed to get Percy Harvin to wide receiver eight. That's shocking. Andy Dalton got A.J. Green to the wide receiver 11. And then Andrew Luck with Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne, very established. That is the – like the 2012 Reggie Wayne situation is 100% the way I view this is – extremely established star which is what you see like if you go back and you look at all the rookie quarterbacks and their highest receiver in terms of fantasy production the ones that have succeeded the ones that have made it through the outliers have been the best players of the group it's they don't elevate a middle tier player they make the best players the best players make them great so steve smith Reggie Wayne, A.J. Green, Roddy White. Those are four stars. So what about the wide receiver who through four seasons is averaging over 98 receiving yards a game, which would be number one all time? Yeah, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, that that's why. Look, I mean, we're 
we're, we're at least we, we are acknowledging the situation. I don't have Justin Jefferson number one. If you had Kirk Cousins on this team or even uh, just someone, a quarterback who I had faith in, I mean, I don't know if you – where okay, side, side conversation here. Okay. Where are you with J.J. McCarthy – starting versus Sam Darnold. Like do you do you think this is week 1 the rookie takes over or I hope so. or that Sam Darnold plays like maybe through the bye week which is not an uncommon thing. I really hope it's one. When is the Vikings bye week? Let's pull it. I don't pull. have that on the top. Of I, my well, head. I, was, I was throwing it out to yeah. see if anyone had I'll look it up if it's not there. No, I uh I hope it's McCarthy. Even if it's painful for a couple weeks. But but not hope. Give me your what you really so week six is the Vikings bye week. So potentially five games of Sam Darnold make the transition. Week seven on you of JJ McCarthy. Do you think it happens sooner than that? I as of right now, I think he'll be the starter week one. Okay. That's that's what I expect. And maybe that's just from watching Sam Darnold. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, why are we still high on him? Because he's he's put up the best numbers in the history yeah. of the NFL at the wide receiver position. They improved their offensive line. Uh, I think McCarthy's a smart quarterback. The best receiver on this team that's always open is is Jefferson, and he put up insane target numbers when they had. I mean, is, is JJ McCarthy a worse starter than the guys they had running it back last no, year? Definitely I mean, not. You know, he put up twelve for one ninety two in Week Seventeen against Detroit. So yeah, I don't want to be caught stupid with Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Now he's not I mean he's not ranked number 1 for any of us. Yeah, we we I think he's 5 or 6. Yeah. That I, feels like an insult. It's like Tyree Kill and CD Lamb. It's it's very easy. I'm going to take those guys over Justin Jefferson. Jamar Chase, I think that's a closer conversation. For sure. But I also think that's one where you need to be watching what happens like Mike Mike said about Sam Darnold, you know, what does preseason look like? What does camp look like? Try to you know, read through the coach speak there. Instagram question from Caleb King. Does Dalton Kincaid lead the Bills in receptions and yards this year? Last year, he had the fourth most receptions ever for a rookie tight end. Already good. a bunch of hype train stuff happening. Talking about him catching everything and looking amazing and off-season camp activities. <laughs> it's... He should... But I think that there I, – I don't think it is a – it's not a slam dunk where you had, you know, to to, st to start the season, both him and Dawson Knox are sharing time on the field. And, I, and I'm just – these are just snaps, of course. Knox is a different archetype of a player. He's blocking more. But, you know, Dawson Knox goes down to injury. He comes back. Then weeks 14 through 18, Dawson Knox is averaging about – nearly 50% of the snaps and Dalton Kincaid at averaging 57% of the snaps. So he, he was a rookie should take another step was a first round pick by the Buffalo bills at the time kind of felt like he's being drafted to be the future of their pass catching. But how I, do I, you have but, it statted? But I think that there's okay. So let me get to the, so I have Dalton Kincaid right now at tight end six. Is he the leader though in receptions Let for the Bills? Because I, I do have him leading them in total receptions. I have him with eighty-three receptions, which would be ten more than last year. Yes, I I do have him leading the team in receptions. So the, to answer the question question briefly, yeah, we both see it that way. That doesn't mean the leap is into some yeah number yeah. one overall spot. Right. His ADP right now, Mike. Uh, Kyle just sent this through is the fifth round, the fourth pick. Is that a fair price if he leads the team? I think so. Yes. I, yeah, would say I yes. think so. I'd say, yeah. And you have like, the projections versus upside are not the same thing. Like, the upside, should Dalton Kincaid take a true year two leap, are top three tight end. Yeah, it is. And I don't know, you know. Do we see some of the like stalwarts of the tight end position step up and continue to maintain their their spots? You know, is Mark Andrews going to be right back up there again this year? I, think, I believe so. I think a lot of people expect it, but at the same time, I know Trey McBride, high expectations, Laporta, yep. Ingram, N Njoku, and then you have players like Pitts. 
Like, there are more upside angles at tight end this year, in my opinion. Like, you know how you normally have the group of, like, right. three or four? Like, this year I see— So, who would you—I'll give you Kincaid, and I'll give you Pitts. Who else would you put in that category? McBride. That you, oh, I, I have McBride as— I know, but you are, you're on drugs. Like, you inject yeah. Trey McBride statistics. Yeah, right into like, the veins, brother. You've converted a, a, a spreadsheet into, <laughs> like, a drug, and you snort it every day. I'm saying that Trey McBride is not in those— for me, he's not in the projections of guys who are like, I think they could take this step, the step. It's no, McBride did, and he is just where among the elite tight ends does he finish. That's how I have I mean, it, it seems like historically we've taken a lot of time before we run up with a crown and hand it to these tight ends. But I feel like you have had this crown – Stored away for so yeah. long that the second Trey McBride well, put so like long, but it's, was three it, games together, it was like, here you go. I had this thing on layaway. I just want to hear a sentence about why it, it might not be as great this year from you. But then I would just be lying to you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. So McBride is in that category for me of decisions between what you expect to be solid guys or upside. Najoku is still interesting. Najoku was the. I, 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 people need to know, like, this was the best tight end in football over the last part of the year. Yeah, I know why. It wasn't, but but you're talking week seven on, Mike. Yeah. He didn't even have a, he had one fantasy finish outside the top 12 from week seven on. That's almost the whole season. How many of those weeks did he play when he actually had a good game? But was he playing with Deshaun Watson? Where, where, how, do you have uh, Najoku's numbers in front of you? Yeah. Okay, Watson played week nine. How did it go? He was four for 26 and a touchdown. Okay, he got the score. That's the tight end, uh, he, he tight got, end 12. He got now, the this touchdown. This is going to be fun because I got one sheet up. Okay. You have the other sheet up. I have. Don't say week 13. Deshaun Watson played week 10. He was six for 58, finished as the tight end 10. That's a good That's a good week. That's Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean. It's, it, it's not bad, but. Saying, sure. And the first three weeks, I don't remember Najoku was. No one needs to. <laughs> That's the 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 hardest thing for him. But you can't blame him for not playing with Watson and putting up the numbers that he did. No, no. I'm saying the like, hardest thing is the team knows for sure now that Najoku can be like the a uh, focal point or the focal point of any given week. And yet his numbers, when Deshaun Watson has been the quarterback, have been terrible. Everything that's happened with Deshaun Watson as the quarterback has been terrible. Yes. That's the biggest question. He was the, he was the tight end six last year, and he missed a game. That's what Najoku gave you. 123 targets, yeah. 81 for 882, six touchdowns, and big plays. That's what, that's what Joseph Flacco gave you. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just Flacco, though, right? They started um, Dorian Thompson-Robinson a couple times. Yeah. That's his name, right? Yeah. Yeah, DTR? Yeah, DTR. And I think one other – didn't they start one other quarterback? Let me go Kyle, check. do you remember one other name? Uh, PJ Walker? Yeah. Did Walker? Driscoll. And Jeff Driscoll. <laughs> so when you say – I mean, he played – I Yeah. No, Joku I played with Fl – Flacco was five games, dude. Yeah, five games, but his run was from week seven on. I just think he's being undervalued. In the open field, David and Joku is unbelievable. Yeah, it's, if they didn't learn from last year, they're stupid. I, that that's what I'm saying. Where it's so difficult is it, and it wasn't it wasn't just Flacco. PJ appeared in six games. DTR was in eight. The fact that you had four other quarterbacks and Najoku was able to put up. Like some really strong numbers with those guys, yeah, but I mean, the, so rare with Watson. The sample was so small. Watson played what? Six games. It felt like zero. <laughs> felt it felt like too many. It was not good, man. Nope. But they're they've uh, they tied oh, themselves but, to him. Yeah, buckle forever, up, right? Buckle up. It is. Yeah, it's. We were talking about him on the the Dynasty show, and it it really is. Unless they take a uh, a Russell Wilson salary cap kick to the groin you're it watson's there for two years the the browns had the most turnovers in the nfl played five different quarterbacks and went 11 and 6 that's that's amazing 
So, you know, keep using Njoku. Uh, Instagram question from Alec writes in, says, is Garrett Wilson a trap and redraft? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, is, is Aaron Rodgers a good quarterback? Did you see his quote? But uh, I don't want to go out as a bum or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I don't want to go out as a bum or whatever yeah. he said. You know, he he welcomes the competition and Honestly, understands the pressure. And We don't need Aaron Rodgers to be great. We need we just, we need him to be a starting quarterback and a, a slightly above average starting quarterback. And then Garrett Wilson's fantastic. Go. That's proven by Joe Flacco giving Amari Cooper a great run at the end of the year. And, you know, you can come in and be competent. And you know, Jefferson was good with Nick Mullins. Like, just give me, give me like a late career Philip Rivers season in, in yes. Los Angeles. And the it's evaluating film can be very difficult, but watching Garrett Wilson routes and the way he can put defenders in a blender and his hands are good. So it's everything is there. If he's if he sees the same volume, then and has a quarterback who can actually give him catchable targets, then he he won't be a trap. But that's a that's a lot of ifs for a guy who's being drafted as the eighth overall or eighth wide receiver overall. I don't think he'll be a trap. That would I be don't my, think so either. That's my final vote. And I, I, I think part of the reason why he won't be a oh, trap. Oh, yeah Garrett, yeah, Garrett played with Flacco. Were those good games, Kyle? Yeah, they were pretty good. I remember. Yeah, yeah. He's It's passing volume. I mean – I don't think it'll be a trap because I don't know if you can tell me the next best player to catch a football on that team. And Aaron Rodgers is not stupid. When he had Devontae Adams or Jordy Nelson, he throws it to the talent. Yep. He likes guys who, that are wide open. Yeah, and that's one of Wilson's abilities. So most ever targets through two years, he's been a tease, right? I, w let's be honest. He he makes all the moves and, and the ball's not near him. And then, you know, he's due for some touchdown. It's got to be. And the Jets are due to get into the red zone for once. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Let's take a quick break and come back with some more questions. All right. Kyle on X says, how do you feel about Chris Olave as a wide receiver? One for your fantasy team. We're still waiting for a true breakout, but he has high end traits to be one of the top in the league. Yep. Feels like we're talking about Garrett Wilson. Yeah, all three of them are the same. Uh, Drake London, yep. Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson. Yeah, the 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 promise is still there. To me, all three of those guys can really they they can still take the the leap forward. Will all three of them do it? I don't know. I mean, probability says that they won't. They need Joe Flacco, man. <laughs> Everybody needs Joe Flacco. And uh, funny enough, we were just talking about Chris Olave as well on the Dynast this week's Dynasty show, and Betts was bringing up, you know, we have a new offensive philosophy, hopefully. I mean, you have, you have a new guy. So last year, Pete Carmichael, the team was 32nd in pre-snap motion. And this is like a real easy stat of when you go, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it's like, the Miami, San Francisco, any high-powered offense that you think of, they run pre-snap motion all the time because this is a part of what the NFL needs right now. They were dead last in it. They bring uh, they bring in Clint Kubiak, so another one of the Kubes coming from San Francisco. This will be in there. This will be a much more – So I want to watch the this, television this, this year? Be, I mean, that yes. was so hard to watch last year. This will be a – a more modern offense, no matter what. It, maybe they don't become great, but they will be much improved over last year. And uh, interesting tweet here from Football Insights. Chris Olave, 3.13 yards per route run with motion the last two regular seasons. That would be third in, for all wide receivers behind Tyreek, behind CeeDee Lamb. So Olave, when they've gotten things going around, when they've actually used a modern approach to an NFL offense, good things have happened. I want to play a game with you, and uh, and I'm going to read you a name. Okay. And you're going to tell me whether they're one of the Saints wide receivers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to play a game. So just say Saints wide okay. receiver. Or I mean – I've also <laughs> asked – no, no, no. I've also asked ChatGBT to give me – some random names. 
Okay. So I'm mixing in. Like, you don't know. All right? Um, Let's start here with uh, Kyle Sheets. No. Yeah, he is a four stringer for the Saints. <laughs> All right. Next name, uh, Stanley Morgan. Stanley, no, no yeah, way. third stringer with the Chiefs or with the Saints. Morgan Stanley. Nope, Stanley Morgan, <laughs> my friend. Uh, let's go here, Andrew Brooks. Let's say no, no, not a Saints wide. Yeah, receiver. all right, we got one. Um, let's go with Mason Tipton. <laughs> Look, bro. Rashid Shaheed, yeah, At Perry, yeah, Chris Olave. Mm -hmm. These are the only guys of note right yeah, now. Yeah. By the way, Mason Tipton, one of the third stringers for the Saints. Also, Jermaine Jackson, Bob Means. Oh yeah, Bob. They just Equinamia St. Brown. Um. I, so yeah, you all the pre-step motion in the world is not going to help you from Stanley Morgan, but. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I mean Stanley Rashid Shahid, Morgan Stanley. Rashid Shahid's gonna get targets. And so is Juwan. Oh, yeah. So is Juwan Johnson. And pff, let's be honest, their wide receiver too. His name is Alvin Kamara. Yeah. Juwan Johnson is sneaky. He is and I know it's he was sneaky last year and it, it felt like it as a whole, it did not work out, but end of season. By end of season, it, you're like, Oh, there it is. There's Juwan Johnson. Uh so There you are, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> he will be He'll be a fun name to monitor over training camp to see if he if he gets the same type of buzz that he got last year. He was hurt in the final week of the year and only played forty six percent of snaps. The previous three weeks, tight end one, four, nine. Yep. And uh, he he just did not get off to a good start. So it'll be it'll be interesting if um, you know the offense changes under Kubiak and what that means for the tight ends, but. I'm sure that you're going to have uh, some interesting names catching passes this year. All right. Uh, Jacob wants to know, Instagram question, Chase Brown or Zach Moss in a full PPR? So the the Bengals, uh, I'm putting together a uh, – doing a, just you know, a little research project here, trying to figure out these really actually like what would be viewed as an ambiguous backfield because – this team doesn't have a running back currently being drafted inside the top 24 running backs. So like saying we just, we don't know who it is for sure. And the Cincinnati Bengals are in that camp right now between Zach Moss and Chase Brown. Uh, Chase Brown is what we have listed as 5'10", 205. I like to me, this is Zach Moss. He, I, I know that the deal wasn't, not a lot of money. It, it wasn't a lot, but it was $3 million guaranteed. It was one of those pretty quick in the free agency process that they're like, we're going to move on from, from Joe Mixon. You know, the whole saga of he was going to get cut, and then he ends up getting traded at the last second. Chase Brown seemed to not be trusted in, you know, in actual pass protection. And Zach Moss is – Zach Moss was very good last year. And it's we, one of the I, things we, Jason would often say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jason, big Zach Moss guy. Yeah, but during if you listen to our mock draft episode from Tuesday, where I was trying to lay out some of these these running backs in weird situations of, or not weird, but in good situations where you say, is this player good? Do I know if this player is good or not? I don't think we know yet on Zach Moss because that's the risk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why he's being drafted. Like, yeah, the risk is just if he's not good. He doesn't have to be their guy. But if he is good, he'll be their guy. Then he'll get sixty five to seventy percent of the work. So to me, this I think is, Moss is good. This and is he's Zach Moss. The, that's the pick for me as well. I agree. Uh Scoot Warner says, How do I know when it's time to give up and let my toddler <laughs> let my toddler make my draft picks? That's a really good question. Um Don't give up, Scoot. There's a few moments that you do know. There are some signals. If you look at your roster any more, at any point during the draft and you have two or more Carolina Panthers on the team. Okay. That's, that's one right. of the that's when you hand it All off right. to the toddler. That's the, good. That's one of the markers. Um if you draft any of the tight ends Mike likes, you want to hand that off to the toddler at that How point in time. Dare you. <laughs> um YouTube question from Philip. Do you think I could get the one oh one for Jamar Chase in a dynasty? And should I consider offering? Yeah, if you draft Stanley Morgan, that's also 
another opportunity to hand the picks to your uh, toddler or your portfolio. <laughs> you do want to hand your portfolio <laughs> off, not your team. That's smart. Um, Jamar Chase. Could you get the one on one for Jamar Chase? Oh yeah, yeah. Not everywhere, but in a good amount of to leagues, say yes. should I consider offering it? Like I mean, this is no. I I would rather have Jamar Chase than Marvin Harrison. Is it close at all? I mean, it's like what if you're in a full, you're fully rebuilding, and Jamar. It's like Glendale to Scottsdale, close. You know what I mean? Okay. Same state, about thirty minutes. Thirty minutes away, freeway drive. But I'm not crossing state lines. Yeah, I'm still going to take Jamar Chase over Marv. Yeah. That uh, look that, and, and readily accept that that could be a bad decision after this year. Do you think we? Should commit to more local, regional humor. You think that will land with mo like city-based humor from Phoenix? I, yeah, I I think people really like it. Yeah, I think they get it. So like, what what's now? Borrows Pizza. That's a local pizza chain yeah. here. We'll do Borrows jokes. Oh, it's great. Um, all right, we'll we'll keep it regional. Uh, we should. What we should do is use AI and every location that people hear the podcast. AI switches those two cities to two cities that are near them. <laughs> so it seems like we cater okay, to I everybody. Follow. Follow. And then like, these guys are like my best friends. They live right next to me. Right? That would be very funny. Yeah. So get can, on that. Can we work on, get that? on it? Deucers? We're on it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, question on IG. I have Saquon. This is from Matt Sink. I have Saquon and A.J. Brown in Dynasty. Should I be looking to move one of them? Uh, Not really. No. No, I'm, I'm fine. The, the Eagles will be a strong offense, and both of these players individually are are going to be great players. Yeah, two Panthers, not yeah. great. Two Eagles, sure. Yeah, yeah I, I think you're fine there. IG question from Doan. In Dynasty, would you rather trade away Jalen Hurts or Anthony Richardson? Come on, guys. Well, it's it's the the balance of if you trade Jalen Hurts, you're going to get way more. Uh, yeah, yeah. You so would. it's do you want way more and taking the risk of the next big quarterback, or keeping the elite quarterback and just getting what you can for Richardson? I think I bit my tongue. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. You think? Yeah, I did bite my tongue. Okay. Confirmed. Adam Schefter reporting. <laughs> I have never bit my tongue and thought, hold on. <laughs> did I bite did my tongue? Did I? Did, did, you, did someone else bite your tongue? Is that what you're no. <laughs> Jay, Jay Grizz bit my tongue. Um, yeah, so that's new. What were you doing? I don't know. I was just kind of fooling around. <laughs> oh, you, man. Could you go on? Yeah, no, I'm good. All I'm right. not bleeding or anything. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, we'll close it out with this YouTube question from OG Ghost. We have a punishment in our league where the last place uh, the last place person has to stay at a Waffle House for 20, okay. 24 hours. Yeah, so the Waffle Challenge. Yeah, if you eat one waffle, you can knock off one hour of time. The problem is last place has already confirmed he won't be doing it. Outside of just kicking him from the league, do you have any suggestions or penalties we could implement this season? Um. Uh, so, in the season or in the draft for people that don't complete the punishment for finishing last. So that's so the last place person agreed to this before and now isn't doing it? I, I would have to believe so. What's wrong? I mean, waffles are delicious. Yeah, but you're – have you not seen video of people I know. trying to do it? Yeah, I know. I mean, it's like how many of those waffles could you actually eat? Uh, we've talked about this. I think I could get 12 down and I'd be sitting there for 12 more hours. Oh, man. You eat a waffle, wait an hour. That's probably – is that the pace you want to do? It could be. Like, like, yeah, we, uh, we need to break down Has the Has anybody had the inherent danger of being at a Waffle House included into the punishment? I think that's that's a known thing. If you spend 12 hours in a Waffle House, yeah. do you leave? <laughs> do, you, do you leave fully intact? Yeah, like with unarmed? all of your possessions? I think there's a chance of no. Uh, you better eat quick. But but for the question, I mean, it's that's so lame. That is so lame. If you were part, especially like if people have already done this, and then it's it's known 
everyone agrees, if you agree these are the stakes. It, yeah, it's that's the breaking of the the trust. If you all agreed in the beginning to do it, and then he lost, and he's a sour sport and doesn't want to do it, I think if it's important enough for the league, you can boot him. Yeah. And if it's not that important and you like the guy and you want him in there, then don't make this that big of a deal. It's 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 so bad, man. It's so bad because this one person now is above the league. Right. They will feel like, oh, no, I can do whatever I want. And, like, I don't have to abide by the rules of of this league. It's, yeah, I, I do. I think, like, imagine you go, imagine you're in anywhere. You make a financial bet. It goes through. You lose. And, like, this is when people are coming with bats for your, for your legs. Like, it's a bet. It it You have... You if have, this, then yeah, that. Yeah, like the, a contract has been made, and the contract needs to be honored. It's not a big deal, man. Just eat some waffles, <laughs> go, man. Go goof around and wa bring bring a, a laptop, get some work done, bring a, whatever, a book. There's no way that he's going to hear any of this stuff we're saying because if you've been listening to the show, there's no way he's in this position. I can agree you with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I All right, that. that is going to do it for today's but episode. Just, just, Sorry. Just, yeah, just go just, do just go it. Just eat some waffles, man. Um, Tuesday, we've got fantasy wild cards on the show. Oh, wild cards already. Yeah. And then we've got an explain yourself episode. Oh, excellent. So DK Metcalf, DK that Metcalf, episode. Jason, go ahead. And, uh, that's on Thursday. We'll be back intact then. And, um, wait, I, I, I had a request for what? Hold on. I got to find a drop really quick. It's important. Who was doing? Don't oh, we have new ones. We're just going to keep going with this one? Okay. Yeah, I like that part. Uh, do we have new ones? Yes. Do we have some of the staff make us some songs? We have, we have some. Remember, remember Jason put out just a, that banger. Okay. So we're going to work some in? Yes. I, we got I nine days left. I would love to. So uh, there you go. Ultimate. UDK. <laughs> UDK. Oh, okay. Come on. I do, I do remember now. Yeah. All right. That'll do it for today's show. Thank you for joining us. Shout out to the Deucers and Deucers Alley for keeping things on lockdown. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>